And good morning, One Life. We've got a new console here that we work out of on our web portal for our conference call. So it took me just a second to get situated there. Got an excellent call here scheduled for you and set up for you this morning. I want to start by saying good Monday morning to you. Thank you for being on our weekly conference call. We have quite a treat for you this morning and that we have two guests that are first timers on the call. They're both a little bit nervous, uh, but I'm very excited to have them. So uh, I'll start by introducing our guest for this morning's devotion, Hallie Major Phillips. Uh, like myself, she's grown up around our organization. In 2013, she graduated from the University of Alabama with a degree in finance and marketing. And there she was awarded the Austin Scholar Award as the top student in the entire business school. Uh, after college, she lived and worked in New York for a short season. Like several of us, she found her way back to the organization her family helped build as she became a part of the One Life team in 2014. She now is a marketing and lead representative for us. She and her fiancé, Dawson Dice, who also did a conference call not too long ago for us, they're both active members at our church uh, that they attend together, the Evangel Temple Church here in Meridian. For our devotion this morning, I'd like to welcome my co-worker and my friend, Miss Hallie Major Phillips. Hallie? Thanks, Jeff. I'm really excited about sharing on the call this morning. I hope you're all having a wonderful morning so far. Good Monday morning. <laughs> Open your mind and heart, your entire being, to receive my love in full measure. So many of my children limp through their lives starved for love because they haven't learned the art of receiving. This is essentially an act of faith, believing that I love you with boundless, everlasting love. The art of receiving is also a discipline, training your mind to trust me, coming close to me with confidence. Remember that the evil one is the father of lies. Learn to recognize his deceptive intrusions into your thoughts. One of his favorite deceptions is to undermine your confidence in my unconditional love. Fight back against these lies. Do not let them go unchallenged. Resist the devil in my name and he will sink away from you. Draw near to me and my presence will envelop you in love. That is from a devotion I read daily that I really enjoy. It's um, a re really easy one to read and, um, you know, some days you're busy and you can't um, spend too, too much time, but it's a simple one. Um, just to spend some time, um, some quiet time with yourself in the Lord every day. Um, and I just want to let you all know, um, here at the home office, we we know how hard it is out there in the field for you, and uh, we're here to support you all the time. And I just want to let you know that you all are constantly in my prayers because um, I know, like I said, I know how hard it is. And um, I pray that the Lord will bring you wisdom constantly and put a hedge of protection over you. Um, while you're out in the field and doing uh, what you all do so well. So I want you to know, and I'm not the only person in the home office that you that has um, prayers going on constantly for you. Um, that is something that's super important to me, and I wanted you all to know that. Um, and with that, I hope you all have a wonderful week, and uh, just remember to always have some quiet time with the Lord, no matter how busy your life gets. I find that no matter how stressed I am or how, you know, worked up I am or maybe I had a bad day, but if I can just find those few minutes to uh, get in a quiet place and either read a devotion, read read my word, or just do something that will um, make me rest in his peace, um, it's always that can always make you have a brighter day. So I hope you all have a great week, and God bless you. Awesome. Thank you again for being with us, Hallie. Uh, an honor to have folks that I serve among you, uh, that you know uh, you know their character. And I talk about that every week. I know I kind of maybe sound like a broke record a little bit repeating that so much, but uh, it really is quite a privilege that we do have here and that we have people of such high character that we can call on. Uh, not only during the devotion, but also during the feature segment when they try to give you some kind of nugget uh, or something that may help you along your journey. I know that it comes from a sincere place because I've seen it with a lot of them. So know that this morning. And again, thank you for Hallie Major doing our conference call. Uh, we'll move on now to our weekly production update. It's always uh, nice to see new names on here, and we certainly have some new ones on here. We'll start with our agency as a total for all of One Life. 
We did about what we've been doing for the last several weeks, uh, or really the last couple of months. Averaged uh, right at, uh, or sorry, we averaged at, we've been averaging at about 850,000 worth of submitted AP. That's almost exactly where we are this week, uh, or excuse me, for the week of 627 through 71. Again, we are a couple of weeks behind. Uh, we had a lot going on there for a few weeks there, and so we're starting to catch up, but we'll uh, go now with uh, our production week of 627 through 71. Had $849,143 worth of submitted annualized premium for an excellent week. And we'll move now to the teams. Had a couple of teams that uh, really stepped up their game this week and had some extraordinary numbers. We'll start at number five and work our way to one. USB United Senior Brokerage. We had uh, two of their leaders talk with us last week and did an excellent job on the call, Eric uh, and Jamie. Uh, had $58,029 worth of submitted AP for their group for that week. Excellent job, you guys. Insure and insure with $65,097 worth of submitted AP. Number three on the list, Legacy United out of Lakeland with $67,024 worth of submitted AP. And then number two on the list, Innovative Insurance Brokers with $129,000. $897 submitted AP. And number one, the team of the week for this week with Life Management Group coming in at number one, eight, excuse me, $187,979 worth of submitted AP. And now on to our individual agents, always the highlight of our production update. At number 10, Mr. Richard Garrison came in with $7,249 submitted AP. Scott Shaddy, a manager for us. Uh, leading from the front with $9,032 worth of submitted AP. Number eight, Jacob Riddick. Excellent job, Jacob, with $9,336 worth of submitted AP. At number seven, Rhonda Underwood wrote $9,598 submitted AP. Number six on the list, Cynthia Schneiderman with $9,812. Number five for the top half of the list, Michael Paulson, $10,296 worth of production. Excellent week. Number four, also a guy we've had on the conference call out of Lakeland, Florida, Mr. Mark Hamilton with $10,888. Number three on the list as we reach into our top three, William Russell, $11,801 submitted AP. Number two, Jeremiah Rojas with $24,249. Number one, $25,012 worth of submitted AP for Spencer Long, the agent of the week. Congratulations to all of you, uh, particularly those that uh, we were able to mention for our top ten and Spencer Long with uh, being our agent of the week this week. Uh, also, we want to let you know, uh, we're going to do a brief marketing update as we always do. Uh, we want to let you know here again soon we'll have our Academy and Leadership Summit for the third quarter. Make sure that uh, you register for that, and you can do so by clicking on our New Agent Academy tab at OneLifeAmerica.com. And man, if you haven't seen our new promotional videos for both events, be sure you do so at YouTube.com backslash OneLifeAmerica. Also, to stay plugged in, get hooked up with our web and social media offerings. We have a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn uh, to go along with our One, uh, One Life YouTube channel there. You can check all of those links out uh, at the top right corner of the first page, also at onelifeamerica.com. Uh, so that's our production update, our marketing update. Now moving on to our featured speaker for this morning, Mr. Dwayne Watts. I have the distinct privilege of introducing this gentleman this morning. He's a graduate of the University of Mississippi, also known as Ole Miss. After four years there, he received his degree in marketing. He's worked in various fields through the years and even worked the Veterans Administration in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 2010, he came on as an agent at One Life. And over the past five years, he's been one of the top 15 agents in production for our organization. Uh, for five years, I was blessed to have him on a team of agents I worked with. And because I've seen him up close and personal, I can tell you there aren't many men with the drive and passion that he has. Uh, but it's not just a passion for work. He has a passion for life. He's a faithful member of North Park Church in Meridian, and he is the loving father of a beautiful little girl named Jenna. It's my honor to introduce my friend, Mr. Dwayne Watts, to the conference call this morning. Dwayne, are you there? I'm here. You got me? Absolutely. Glad to have you on the call this morning. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. 
Uh, thank you for that lovely introduction there. Uh, I've been uh, One Life, uh, like Jeff mentioned, for about six years. Uh, this uh, October will be six years, and uh, I'm by no means uh, one of the heavy hitters at One Life. Uh, but you know, I, I average about uh, three thousand a week for the last six years. Uh, I thought what I'd do today is uh, go over what uh, the way I do things each week, uh, from setting appointments to you know going to the client's house and giving my presentation. Uh, to some of you people that have been around for a while, I may sound like a broken record, but so this may be geared more toward the people that are uh, you know fairly new at one line. Um, you know, of course, what I'm going to say is don't take it as the gospel. Uh, uh, but if there's, you know, something I say that maybe you can take and maybe tweak it the way the way you do things, uh, great. Uh, just starting out, uh, I usually work uh, on average week, three days a week, Tuesday through Thursday. And uh, on Mondays when I set appointments, I usually start around 10 o'clock and uh, set appointments. Uh, if needed, if, I, if I'm not able to uh, set enough appointments, uh, at 10 o'clock, I usually try to set about anywhere from around 6 or 7 to maybe 8 the first day. It depends on how far I've got to drive that first day uh, as to how many appointments I'm going to set for Tuesday. Uh, but if I'm not able to set enough appointments in that first round to call it, I'll try again around 2 or 3 o'clock. And if I don't get them in, I'll try again around 6 or 8. But I usually set them at the latest by 3 o'clock and finished up with that round. When I'm when I'm setting appointments, I of course uh, introduce myself and I tell them that I'm calling about the card that we sent to them in the mail in the last two or three weeks uh, that they filled out requesting information on uh, the funeral and final expense plans that we offer. Um, I then tell them that uh, I need to confirm the information on the card, what they filled out, so we can get the information that they requested out to them as soon as possible. I then read off you know their name and address and date of birth and confirm each one of those. Uh, and then I ask them about uh, health. Uh, of course, you know, even if they've got some her serious health problems, we can, you know, write them up on a guaranteed issue policy. Uh, but I, I still ask them about the health questions, ask them the health questions just to kind of see where I'm, I'm standing with them. Um, and so I ask them the health questions. And then once I ask them the health questions, I, I tell them it takes me only about 10 minutes to determine exactly what they would qualify for. Uh, and uh, what their rate would be. And I tell them I'm going to be in there. My company's got them in their area tomorrow. And uh, would the morning or the afternoon be a better time for them to do that? Uh, if, if they suggest morning or afternoon, then I maybe suggest a time uh, based on maybe what I've already set that day. Uh, if that's not a good time for them, then I suggest something else. Uh, but anyway, after I, I set a time with them, uh, one that's good for them, uh, I tell them that we offer a couple of discounts. And, of course, the reason I'm doing this, as most of you know, is I want to get to the bottom line as to whether they've uh, got a banking account. Of course, they you know need a banking account so we can uh, set up a bank draft with them. Uh, I first ask them, uh, I start off with asking them if they're, uh, uh, the first discount is whether they're a smoker or not. You know, we offer a discount for people that don't smoke. And then we offer also offer a second discount. This second discount is for people that, support local banks or credit unions by using either a checking or a savings account. And hopefully they've got one of those. Uh, and then before I hang up with them, I, I reconfirm the appointment time, and, uh, uh, and then that's it. Uh, then the next day, now, I, I failed to mention it. Uh, usually at Wednesday is my biggest day. I try to set anywhere from 8 to 12 appointments on Wednesday. Of course, like I said, Tuesdays, I only set maybe about six or so appointments because, you know, depending on how far I've got to drive to get there. Uh, then Wednesday's my, my big day. I, I try to set anywhere from eight to 12 appointments that day. And when I'm setting appointments, I I don't set an exact time like 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. What I do say, I say I'll, I'll see you between 1 and 2 o'clock. And that's because, you know, of course, we might get hung up on the previous appointment we've had and we might not be there straight up 1 o'clock or straight up 2 o'clock. So I say, you know, I'll be there between – two and three o'clock or three and four o'clock. Give me a little leeway there. Um, and, and then when I arrive at the, the client's home, I, uh, you know, introduce myself and I present the, uh, you know, a copy of the, the card that they filled out. And, um, and I, you know, I explain to them, you know, before I get started with anything else, that, you know, this, what this plan does for you, it, 
gives you that peace of mind, that comfort, knowing that when that time comes, you've got your funeral and final expenses paid for. You don't have to worry about, you know, who's going to pay for it, where the money's going to come from, and you don't have to worry about being a burden on your family members. And of course, I know you don't want to do that, you know. Uh, and, and with this plan, that gives it to you, you know, because, of course, if they qualify for the level plan, they're immediately covered from day one. Uh, uh, and, and then uh, after a little small talk and, and going through that, I, I go into the health questions. And, uh, I, you know, just tell them just to answer yes or no. These are the health questions. I'll maybe flip it around and show them the, it's just, uh, here, these questions here on the front of the sheet. Just answer yes or no to them. Ask them the health questions, and then, uh, of course, uh, after the health questions, uh, you know, we, we know whether they're level, graded, or modified. And I, I tell them, I say, you know, you qualified for the level, or you qualified for the grade, or you qualified for the modified. And, it, you know, if they qualify for the, not for the level, the grade, or modified, I, I tell them I'll explain to you in a few minutes what, what that means, you know. Um, and, and just before I write their rates down, uh, I go over the features of the plan. Uh, you know, on the back of the, the tri close sheet, we've got the features, and uh, I don't go over every one of them. Of course, you know, you don't want to, you know, drown them with, you know, all the features. You know, I just, I just go over the three, the th the three that I think are the, the most important, the main ones, because if you give them too much information, they, they get confused, and it, it maybe scares them off, you know, if I hadn't already scared them off anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh the features I go over on the tri close page, the, the three I go over are the, the individual permanent protection, their rate will never increase, and then over in the middle column, the second one down, full coverage from the very first day. Those are the only three I go over. Um, and, uh, you know, on the, uh, the permanent protection, I, I tell them that, you know, look, this thing is permanent. It's not going to end on you uh, when you reach a certain age like a term life policy would. You know, and, and that's why I'm going over these features with them because, you know, I tell them there's different types of insurance out there. And for fuel and final expenses, you definitely don't want a what's called a term life policy. A uh, term life policy is what it sounds like. Of course, it's for a term of years. It's going to end on you when you reach a certain age, and you're not going to have any more coverage. You know, if the Lord blesses you to live past that term age, you have no more coverage. So with a term policy, you're not guaranteed that your beneficiary is going to be paid when you pass away. Because if you live past that term age, you have no more coverage. With a whole life policy, what we're offering, you are guaranteed that your beneficiary will be paid when you pass away because it's permanent. It's not going to end on you when you reach a certain age. So with it, you're not taking a chance. It's, it's guaranteed to pay to your beneficiary. So you'll have your funeral and financial pay, expenses paid for. With a term policy, of course, you're not guaranteed that. Uh, the second one I go over is, uh, you know, that your rate will be uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, with a term policy, I tell them, you know, your rate will go up on you normally every five years. So the older you're getting, the more expensive it's getting, and then it's going to cancel on you. Uh, you know, with a whole life policy, which we're offering you, your rate never goes up on you. It stays the same. So the rate I'm about to show you is the rate it will always be. It's never going to go up on you. Uh, not every time, but a lot of times I'll, in fact, bring up a, the AARP uh, term policy, because everybody over 50 gets this in the mail. I get it all the time. And, uh, and a lot of people that I call on, I'm sure y'all have called on them, people already have this policy. And, of course, uh, you know, it's, it's going to end on them when they turn 81. You know, it's a term policy through age 80. And, of course, uh, it's uh, AARP sends it out. It's through New York Life, and uh, they're covered up through age 80, but the day they turn 81, they don't have any more coverage. So, uh, of course, with it, they're not guaranteed that it's going to pay off to their beneficiary. Uh, so I, I do mention the ARP policy uh, uh, a lot of times when I'm in the in the uh, house with the people. Uh, but anyway, I emphasize, you know, of course, that the rate's never going to go up on it. It's going to stay the same. And then the third one I go over with them is that they've got full coverage from the very first day. Of course, uh, you know, if they're the level plan, the very first day their coverage begins is the day they make their first payment. They're fully covered beginning on that day. Uh, for example, uh, 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 you can pick any date between now and the next 45 days. You know, of course, if it's a Forester's app, you can pick any date between now and the next 45 days to make your first payment. Well, let's say, for example, you picked August 10th to make your first payment. Well, that's when your coverage is going to begin, on August 10th. You're fully covered beginning on that day. Uh, God forbid if you die the next day on August 11th, it's going to pay the full policy amount to your beneficiary. So if you had a $10,000 policy, it'll pay the full 10000 to your beneficiary. Uh, you haven't just made one payment. You're fully covered 
beginning the very first day. Uh, now, uh, of course, if they're a modified or a graded plan, I explain to them how that works at this point. Uh, I tell them with the, the graded plan, the way it works is if for accidental death, you're fully covered from day one just like you are with the, with the level plan. Uh, so if you made your first payment August 10th and God forbid you died the next day in a house fire or car wreck or fell down some stairs, some kind of accidental death, it's going to pay the full policy amount. But for natural causes, if you die in the first two years of the in the first year of the policy, your beneficiary gets back 30% of the policy amount, or gets 30% of the policy amount. So if you had a $10,000 policy, of course your beneficiary would get your beneficiary would get $3,000 uh, of the of policy amount. Uh, if the individual dies in the second year of the policy, the beneficiary would get 70% of the policy amount. Then beginning in the third year, they're fully covered. So, uh, it, you know, it's a two-year waiting period on full coverage, but at least if something did happen to them in the first two years, natural causes only, and I do emphasize that, it's natural causes only, that, of course, they, they get a, their beneficiary gets a percentage of the policy amount. Now, with the modified plan, of course, if uh, they die in the first two years, the beneficiary uh, gets uh, uh, back everything they have paid in over those months plus 10% interest. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, a bank doesn't even pay 2% of savings account, so that's a pretty good deal, you know, 10% interest on, on your money. And then beginning in the third year, after two years, you're fully covered uh, for the full policy amount. Uh, so at least it's, you know, giving them the, uh, you know, option of, of having some, some coverage there that normally they wouldn't have. Uh, but anyway, uh, after I go over the features, uh, uh, let's see, um, I go to the uh, uh, the rates and uh, I'll write down the uh, the rates down uh, and uh, unless they have any questions, I write the rates down uh, and I show them three. Everybody I see, you know, of course, I write down three different size policies to, and give them the rates on those. Uh, and uh, I, and after the level plan, I, I show them the ADB rate as well. You know, that pays, of course. Uh, Double indemnity if they die accidental death. Uh, but anyway, once I write the rates down, uh, I, I give them the rates, and then I don't say a thing. I just sit back and, and, and wait for them to respond to the rates I've given. I ask them. I do ask them if, if one of those plans look good to you. Which one would be you know fits you the best? What would be best for you? And then I don't say anything. I just shut up, of course. And uh, like they say, you know, whoever talks first loses. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. That's just what I do. And like I say, it's, you know, what I've gone over is not the gospel, but if you can take something from what I do and, and use it and tweak it to your own uh, presentation, great. Uh, but that's pretty much it, Jeff. Uh, if you've got anything or if anybody's got any questions, I'll be glad to answer them if I can. Absolutely. We'd like to open it up for questions, if you don't mind. And uh, what I'll do is adjust the settings. Let me do that now. All right, so we've got the settings adjusted where you can you should be able to unmute yourself. All you have to do is press star six. Uh, again, press star six if you'd like to ask Dwayne a question. Dwayne, how often do you uh, get someone to choose one of the options on the uh, during that first moment of silence? Do you get a lot well, of objections at that point? Well, I, you know, yes, yes and no. Uh, I would say maybe uh, uh, 20% of the time, maybe 15 to 20% of the time, I'll get them to go ahead and choose one right then. But they may come with some objections like I can't afford this or uh, uh, I can't pay anything right now. Of course, if they can't afford it, I offer them maybe a, a, a different size policy, you know, one that can fit their budget. Of course, everybody's got a, a budget. But, of course, you want to get as much coverage as you possibly can. But, uh, you know, well, you, everybody's got a budget. They've got to eat first, of course. So, you know, I, I'll show them a uh, rate on a, a smaller policy or maybe something in between uh, the three policies I've showed them, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say maybe about 15 to 20% of the time somebody will, you know, say, uh, you know, I'll take this or that, you know. Uh, and, and if they – if they uh, can't afford it, uh, uh, if they say they can't afford it, I, you know, try to show them something smaller. Or if they say they can't pay anything now, uh, you know, uh, uh, reemphasize to them that, look, you don't have to pay anything now. You 
And of course, if it's Forrester's, you've got up to 45 days to make your first payment. So we can go ahead and uh, get you set up and, and get you qualified and get you in there. And, uh, you know, you can, you know, put your first payment off up to 45 days. Bill, any more questions anybody might have? Again, just press star six and unmute yourself. And uh, be glad to, I know Dwayne would be glad to answer your question. Okay. Give just another moment for anybody to do that. If you'd like to ask a question, again, just press star six and you can do so. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up. Dwayne, thanks again for being with us. Sure thing. Absolutely. Well, good deal. Well, listen, uh, if any of you have anything that you'd like to add to our conference calls uh, or maybe a feature or maybe you'd like to, especially if you would like to share with us, feel free and call me up. Uh, our number here is 800-748-0026 and my extension is 1348. If you don't get me right then, feel free and leave a voicemail. I uh, want to close with just a couple of thoughts uh, quickly. There's a particular quote from Theodore Roosevelt that says, do what you can with all you have wherever you are. Uh, and there's one more thing I'd like to add to that. As a believer in Christ, uh, I'll take that one step further. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, do it with all your heart as unto the Lord and not unto man. Uh, certainly that gives us plenty of motivation uh, to go out there and, and not only do what we do with all that we can, but do it with purpose. Uh, as we venture out into our week. Again, want to thank all of you for being on the conference call with us this week. We'll always, uh, as Hallie Major mentioned, we're always in prayer for you. We'll continue to pray for you. Uh, and we thank you for what you do. If there's anything we can do to help you, feel free and call us. And look, we'll look forward again uh, to meeting and having another conference call next week at 1030. And we probably will have our president, Mr. Scotty Elliott, with us. So we're very excited about that. Make sure you join us again next weekend, excuse me, next Monday morning at 1030. And we'll look forward to seeing you then. God bless you all. Have a great week.